Our guest today is a city clerk of Chicago. She has served in that position for the past two and a half years and is the first woman ever elected to this office. Prior to being elected city clerk, our guest today served, served as a state representative for six terms. She graduated from Bolingbrook High School where she earned all, all state and all Midwest honors in varsity soccer. She attended Northeast Missouri State University on a soccer and academic scholarship, earning all Midwest honors in soccer and her bachelor's degree in business administration. Ladies and gentlemen, Susanna Mendoza. Susanna. I want to start by saying that Skinny Sheehan always knows how to make a splash, right? Ha ha ha, no pun intended. All right, thanks for that one, Skinny. I'm like a total cold freak, so we'll see how that happens. I may not actually come out with a heartbeat, so. But anything for the kids. Okay, so um, anyway, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, I, want to, I want to start by saying thank you and good afternoon. Um, I'm honored to once again be uh, speaking here with you today. This audience, as usual, is one of the distinction. And I know that you've all taken time from your very busy schedules to join us here today. So thanks very, very much for being here. Thanks also to the City Club for inviting me back. It's nice. I appreciate that. So. It was just two years ago when I first spoke at this event, and a lot has changed since then. On a personal note, last time I was here, I introduced you to my then fiance, David Sostak. Uh, good news, we did not break up. And uh, we had actually just gotten engaged that August of 2011. Uh, well, let me reintroduce you today to my now husband of almost two years, David Sostak. Stand up, honey. Yeah, and the best part of all this is that on December 4th of 2012, so almost exactly one year to the date of our anniversary, which is on the 17th of December, we became the proud parents of a beautiful baby boy named David Quentin Sostek, who is about to turn one. And honestly, out of all of my achievements or accomplishments in life, that he is by far the best and also the most fun. So back, thank you, David. And by the way, he started walking at 10 months, and he can like balance on his dad's hand. He can do all these amazing things, which I, of course, think he's ready for the Cirque du Soleil, so we'll see. Uh, but back in October of 2011, when I came before you, I, you know, I think I showed up with a flurry of energy and ideas, having just taken the office of the city clerk and uh, becoming the first female elected to the clerk's office, which was pretty cool. My mom liked that. Uh, now I'm still, I believe, a flurry of energy and ideas, and that should come as no surprise to anyone that knows me or is familiar with me, but I think I would say that I'm a little more settled in my role as clerk, and I've accomplished many of the things that I originally set out to do and that I actually talked about that day. While the work of improving government is arguably one that will never really be complete, I can proudly say that I have made vast improvements to the office of the city clerk. I have, I have no intention of stopping that now. As a matter of fact, I continue to push harder than ever to bring about the improvements that I know are achievable. But before we go into all of that, and for those of you that are unfamiliar, um, I'll give a brief rundown of the responsibilities of the clerk's office. Our office's work impacts every single Chicagoan. In fact, our office is the single most visited office in City Hall. As the official record keeper for the city, we're responsible for all legislation that moves through the city council. Additionally, our office distributes dog licenses, issues city business licenses, creates the kids and medical IDs free of charge, and serves as a U.S. passport acceptance facility. Perhaps, though, the most daunting and demanding assignment for our office is the administration of the wheel tax, and we're going to talk about that at a little bit more length later. We're also stepping outside of those prescribed tasks to do things that many elected officials across the country wouldn't even dare to do. Last week, I met with what I would describe as good government computer development developers. They call these folks hackers uh, because they, they create apps and other programs using open data from the government. 
You may think that the fundamental rules and laws of all or even most municipalities are accessible, but that's not the case at all. In fact, the truth is that many municipal codes are secreted away behind internet paywalls, and in the very worst cases, they're considered proprietary information and even copywritten. That means they may not be reproduced without the expressed written consent of the government body, and that there are likely even steep user fees involved. In other words, citizens are legally blocked from accessing the laws of the land, the laws by which they are governed, the laws that belong to them. People have been and are being sued for putting municipal codes on the internet. That's ridiculous. So my office, um, we're working with national open government guru named Carl Malamud on ensuring that Chicago has the most open, accessible municipal code in the country. I didn't know Carl until recently, but if you're interested in open government, he's a fascinating advocate. I highly encourage you to set aside some time, Google Carl Malamud, and familiarize yourself with the work he's doing. Most electeds actually won't even take a picture with the guy, but he's awesome. He's a good, a good person, and he's doing good work, so I'm proud to do so. Now, as you might expect, these hackers are a tough crowd. It's likely for this reason that Carl can count, as I mentioned, on one hand, the number of elected officials who have stood with him in support of this publicly. Carl and advocates like him have a strong sense of right and wrong, and I'm proud to say that they honored my office during the Open Government Chicago meeting that was held last week in the city. Chicago is many things, but it's likely you didn't know that we're also a national leader now in the movement for open government. Our municipal code is vast, and due to the nature of our city government, it's also extremely complex. I have a staff dedicated solely towards managing the introductions that come in each and every city council meeting, all 2,000 pages of them, every council meeting. In the interest of open government, we've placed our municipal code online in a format that is friendly to computer developers. We're sharing it with the public because it's essentially their document. And right now, these developers are working on a variety of apps and programs to make the information that much more accessible to the public. Check out chicagocode.org when you get a chance. There you'll see how those, these innovators and technologists are taking these documents I'm charged with safekeeping and making free, useful products out of them. Government is public service, and while other states and elected officials may believe otherwise, this is a very basic concept to me. We're elected by the people, and the laws of the people should be open, free, and accessible. Of course, now this isn't the only service that we're trying to improve in the office of the city clerk. Right now, I am dedicating a ton of time and resources to the very first major overhaul of the City of Chicago Vehicle Sticker Program in more than 100 years. Now, I'm guessing you've heard of the Chicago City Vehicle Sticker. If you live in the city, you better have one. <laughs> or else you probably need to follow me back to City Hall after this lunch is over, okay? We sell about 1.3 million of these city stickers each summer. And it's the method by which our office collects the wheel tax from citizens of Chicago. This work has traditionally been the most painfully inefficient costing our office a vast amount of frustration each and every summer, driving overtime costs, and honestly, just all around irritating Chicagoans. And I don't blame them. I mean, the system has been outdated for so long, and Chicago has basically, well, fundamentally outgrown the program. So since 1908, let's put this in perspective, 1908, that was the last time the Cubs won a World Series, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Probably it. Cubs fans out there. No booze, okay, no booze. City vehicle stickers since 1908 were sold during a compressed season, generally a six-week sales period that ended every June 30th, every single year. So any of you have a city sticker for all the years that you can remember that you for sure have been alive and you've bought one, it says expires June 30th. So with 1.3 million stickers to sell during this very limited window of time, it's no wonder why our staff can't possibly process the transactions quickly enough. Chicagoans stand in ridiculously long lines all over the city, many times in sweltering heat, all to get to pay a tax that's required of them. So now I use this analogy a lot in my, I've used it before in my budget speech and I, I really just always kind of go back to it. So forgive me if you've heard it before, but I love it because it's so true. City sticker season to me reminds me of like great America. You've got these ridiculously long lines, but at the front of the line, there's no fun ride. You just have to pay a tax. So like, 
what fun is there in that? And uh, as you can imagine, it goes, I think, without saying that people are not happy about that at all. And so my staff, try as they may, you know, they just can't possibly keep up with all of the phone calls, all of the emails that we get every single week. And it all just leads to a terrible, terrible customer service experience. And it costs us a lot of credibility with our constituents. That's been the status quo for many years. And it's been the case where people just come to believe that that's how it is. And when I asked my staff, after my very first city sticker season, why do we do it this way? Can anybody tell me there's got to be some legislation or something that says it has to be in June? I mean, like, what's the genesis of this idea? And nobody knew. And then somebody finally ventured to say, well, it's always been done that way. So, you know, what? Why not do it that way? So clearly that's not the type of clerk that I want to be that just continues the status quo that we know is painfully inefficient. So ending inefficiencies is one of my passions. And when I see something broken, I set out to fix it. And this process is essentially broken. I decided it was time to bring this office and the process into the 21st century. That's why I'm leading the move to year-round sales sticker program. So there's a little bit, a couple little quotes, you know, besides being more efficient, Sales spread over 12 months should mean shorter lines, faster turnaround, less stress for everyone. Chicago Tribune, some of you may have heard of them. Yeah. Beginning in 2014, motors will buy city stickers the way they buy state stickers for their license plates, staggered throughout the year. This makes perfect sense, Chicago Sun-Times. Anytime I can actually get something positive coming out of them, I'm gonna take advantage of it. So um, in any event, that's why we're moving there. And the end result will be dramatically reduced lines, no more headaches, and an improved customer service that benefits all. It will result in greater efficiency and reduced waste. And the taxpayer will benefit in other ways as well. Because the new sticker renewal date will be offset by six months from the annual Illinois license plate registration renewal date, working families, especially those with multiple cars, will be able to better budget for their vehicle expenses. While the idea has always been there, the will was always lacking. And this change, like most change, hasn't been easy. And if you know that weren't daunting enough, I decided to tackle it during an upcoming election year. So uh, people might think I'm nuts, but the alternative to not tackling it during an election year is to just wait and say, I'll put the election before bringing better service to the people of Chicago. And, Again, that's not why I ran for office. So we tackle the problems as we need to tackle them. And with two years under my belt, I feel all the confidence in the world that we've put together an amazing team that's gonna be able to get this done. We'll transition beautifully, and hopefully we'll have everybody on a year-round system started in 2014. So I think you can tell I'm not afraid of the risk, and I'm not afraid of the challenge. As a matter of fact, I embrace it, and I believe in the vision of a better system for Chicagoans. So we've broken down the transition into a couple parts. Step one entailed getting our technology in order, which we're well on our way to doing by hiring the city clerk's first ever chief technology officer, Jonathan Friend. He's here in the, in the crowd. <laughs> and also, we've teamed up with a great technology vendor. I couldn't be happier. Clarity Partners. That's led by David Namcom and Rod Zek. And the Clarity team is there as well. So thanks for being here, guys. Additionally, we launched an unprecedented educational campaign to communicate the upcoming changes to the public and collected VIN data, that's vehicle identification number data, for the very, very first time. Step two is coming in 2014, and it involves actually moving every resident in the city and more than 1.3 million vehicles to a new renewal month. So I'm going to walk you through how this works. In spring of 2014, when you come in to purchase your new city vehicle sticker for the last time in this you know, reduced window of time, your new renewal month will be set six months from the expiration of your state license plate registration. So here you can see, you know, just look to see if you happen to know off the top of your head when your license plate expires. Follow the arrow and that would tell you what your new city sticker date's going to be. For purposes of this example, let's say your state license plate expires in April of 2014. When you come see me, let's say it's June, when you come to renew your sticker, that means that your new city vehicle sticker renewal month from now on will always be October for that vehicle. So easy enough. When you purchase your sticker, you'll be given two options to get you to that new renewal month of October for this example. 
The first option will be to purchase a prorated or short-term sticker, as you can see there to, my, to the left. Um, the first option, I'm sorry, that, that's it. This sticker will be valid from July to October, so only for four months, because you're buying it in 2014, let's say in June, that gets you to October, and that's four months. Accordingly, it will obviously cost less, because it'll be a prorated four months that you're paying for, but you'll have to remember to come back and renew in just four months. So can't forget to do that. The extended or long-term sticker, which is to your right, offers greater convenience, but it will cost more because it will be good for four months plus a year. So if you want to call it like the prorated or a prorated plus. In other words, you're purchasing a sticker that's good for 16 months. So if you don't really want to see our smiling faces at the clerk's office and you have better things to do with your time and you can afford a few extra months on your year-long sticker, that might be the better option for you. So the key here is that I think it was really important for me in particular to be able to offer taxpayers a choice as to how do they want to get to their new renewal month because everyone's financial situation is different. It can be difficult for people to embrace change, but I also think that if you explain the reasoning and give people options, they're more likely to be open to new ideas. So in this case, the option, I think, will help people better budget for their vehicle expenses. Now, in cooperation with Secretary of State Jesse White's office, without which none of this would have been possible, our office for the first time has accurate vehicle identification number, or VIN, data. This data allows us to reach every single Chicagoan with a vehicle registered in the city of Chicago. Now, collecting this information could have added to our transaction times this last season or caused an inconvenience, but we made it crystal clear through strategic communication efforts that we needed this extra bit of information and our customers came prepared. So we really had a wonderful transition to this new VIN system. This invaluable partnership has been a success across the board, and I really do want to thank Secretary of State Jesse White and his staff for their cooperation and dedication to helping us serve the people of Chicago. Now, while you may have assumed that our office has always had access to up-to-date motorist data from the Illinois Secretary of State's office, I can bet, I'd bet $100 that everybody here just assumed that we did. Uh, that wasn't the case. This level of intergovernmental co collaboration and cooperation between our offices did not exist previously, and without it, year-round sales would not be possible. Thanks to this new partnership, not only do we have a means of transitioning to year-round sales, but also a way to prevent fraud and find those people who weren't paying their fair share of the wheel tax. Just this last year alone, we added 30,000 new vehicles who had never been in compliance because of this new ability to access real, real data from the Secretary of State's office. I mean, that's a little over $2 million in new revenue. So now I know that um, I've talked about wanting to work to make improvements in our office, and we're doing that. And I knew that this would result in an increase in revenue. What I didn't know for sure was how quickly we would see those results. Now, our initial uh, conservative predictions saw the city's investment paying off sometime in 2015 at the earliest. When I say the city's investment, I mean our investment in moving away from the seasonal sales to a year-round system. We predicted we'd see a payoff in that investment uh, by 2015 at the earliest, and we predicted an increase of approximately $1.5 million in new, stable, and recurring annual revenues starting in the year 2015. And had that been the case, that would have been a relatively great recoup of our investment. But that's not what happened. What happened is that we more than doubled our expected 2015 re revenue returns two years ahead of time. Not only did our office already recover our entire 1.7 million investment, which is really spread out over two years, we recovered all of that investment in year one of the transition. And after accounting for that, there's still close to $3 million of more money going straight into the city's coffers. Thank you. So for the first time ever, our office will reach $120 million in revenues through the Vehicle Sticker Program. This is an increase of $4.5 million in recurring, stable, new revenue for the city of Chicago. Let's think about that. A city department delivering more recurring, stable revenue than expected, ahead of schedule. We did it without pushing additional fees on the motorists. And we did it without adding staff or binging on overtime. In fact, we've met all of these goals with fewer staff and reduced overtime. In 2002, we had 141 employees working for the city clerk's office. We currently have 98 
employees. That's a 30% reduction in staffing. Even with the smaller staff, we've managed to cut overtime dramatically. I'm going to say dramatically with a capital D. In council services, which I mentioned earlier, overtime is down 93%. Yes, you heard that right. 93% since I took office. Overtime is down nearly 45% in our sticker services department, even considering that we're still on a seasonal sales period schedule. So overall, overtime in the city clerk's office is down 70% since I took office. Now, that's the power of smart policies and strong partnerships. Those are major components of the legacy that I'm building in the clerk's office. Better customer service, innovation, the application of new technology, and efficient operations. In only a little over two short years, we have seen tremendous successes as a result of our efforts to modernize the office of the city clerk. From an expanded and updated Chicago City Vehicle Sticker Sales Program to back to basics approach to cutting government waste, we're fearlessly taking on, taking, I should say, the office of the city clerk in a dramatically new direction. So I'm excited. I think you can tell. I'm excited to have so much good news to share with you in just my third, the beginning of my third year in office. And I'm also very excited about the possibilities in store for the future of the office of the city clerk. And lastly, I'm super honored to have some of the hardest working and talented people Chicago has to offer working in my office, some of whom are here today. Starting with my deputy clerk, Karina Sanchez, my legal eagles, Julia Ellis and Chris Mermigas, my communications director, Pat Corcoran, my CTO, John Friend, Peter Polichick from my council division, and of course, Tony Dixon and Amanda Prentice in my front office, just to name a few. They really make it a pleasure and, I would say, an adventure to serve as this amazing city's city clerk. So again, I really, really do want to say thank you to the city club for the, for the invitation to speak once again. And I thank you for joining me here today. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Don't go too far. I think with such a thorough and complete, do we have any questions? They didn't ask you how much the uh, cost was going to be, even with the extended book. All reports are is that you're holding the line real tight on that, too. Uh, let me just say that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, not that I ever want to get into this debate, but uh, I did hold the line the best I could for the initial increase. You all remember that I was strongly opposed to it, came out very publicly against it, but I don't get to set the fees for these city stickers. That is city council and the mayor who proposes that so if you got an issue take it up with them but we're doing our best and i think what today's speech did prove is that our office has done an amazing job of creating brand new revenue without having to ask the public to pay more out of their pockets so that's going to continue to be my mantra and we're going to continue to find ways in which to hopefully do everything within our power to say, you know, let's go after people who need to be in compliance. Let's stop trying to make people feel like they're being nickeled and dimed. If you can create greater efficiencies in your own, you know, in your own shop, you know, let's exhaust all of those avenues before we have to ask people to, to pay more. So, you know, I remain obviously a person who does not want to see an increase in any kind of, any kind of fee, really, particularly if it's in a fee that we have any control over. We don't, but we're going to continue to try to find efficiencies in-house that will hopefully be able to offset a fee like that in the future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a trip. Don't go away. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, she's in such a rush. It is a tribute to you, Madam Clerk, that there are, you did such a thorough and good job that there is no uh, questions. Everybody's happy with the job you're doing, too. And that's the most important. 